Now, a different midterm election story. As 10,000 baby boomers reach retirement age every day, voters in the state of Maine will soon consider the country's first universal home care program. But the proposal and how it would be funded are proving controversial. Our economics correspondent Paul Solman has the story. It's part of our series, Making Sense, which airs every Thursday. Ninety-five-year-old Hazel Cross has been living on her family's farm in rural Freedom, Maine, for 75 years. If she had to move to a nursing home? Oh, it would be the end. The end? Of my life. Need to get your oatmeal while it's hot. Good thing her son, Myrick, moved back to the farm seven years ago, so Hazel Cross could stay put. I'll do whatever I can do for her to stay here because we can provide the care for her that improves the quality of her life. She has a purpose and she feels it. I can see she, she feels value. Because of her son, who helps his mother cope with dementia and other age-related ailments. He also cares for his 38-year-old daughter, Catherine, who has Down syndrome. It's more than he can handle by himself. I interviewed some agencies, but I couldn't afford them. Some of them were $25 an hour for their staff. They you know, have to have overhead and that. And so I found local people who were willing to work part-time, and that's what we've piecemealed together. Cross pays a patchwork of providers $10 to $15 an hour. Kate is on Tuesday and Thursday. Tyson is on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and Paula comes on Saturday and part of Sunday. So the checks that people get paid... In order to pay the checks, the 75-year-old Episcopal priest, who thought he'd retired, has returned to work. I'm working half-time in Brewer at St. Patrick's Church. That's where I get the salary to pay the caregivers that make it possible for Mom and Catherine and I to stay here. If I weren't able to work to pay them, I don't know what we would do. Father Cross typifies how most home care has been provided in America, by family and friends. But families are shrinking, dispersing, and so there are fewer to take care of more. Their families are so spread out, they're all over the place. Some of them can't take in an elderly person, or they can't just move here and do what I've done. But in Maine, he sees some hope. Next week, voters will consider question one which would provide free home care for people 65 and older and the disabled, to be funded by a 3.8% tax increase on income above $128,400. Oh, great God, grant me your grace. Many in Father Cross's community would benefit. Just look at his prayer group. With 20% of Mainers 65 or older, this is the oldest state in the country. And as elsewhere, there aren't enough home care workers already. Ben Chin, lobbying for the proposal, blames low pay. Right now, there's about 6,000 hours a week of seniors who aren't getting care, and it's just because agencies can't hire workers because they can't pay workers enough to come do this job. Maine home care workers average just $11 an hour. Question one's tax hike would go to providing care and raises and training to attract more workers and family caregivers would also get a stipend. In Lisbon, Maine, 79-year-old Ed Fallon is cared for by his 21-year-old granddaughter, Nina Dennehy. Fallon moved in with Dennehy, a waitress, and her fiancé two years ago. His caretaker moved away, so I stepped up to the line and became his caretaker. Without you guys, he'd be? He has no one else. If he were to become more ill than what he is right now, I probably wouldn't be able to take care of him. I wouldn't have the time. I still have to work. I still have to like, pay, pay rent, pay electricity, pay the oil, groceries, um, take care of everything else. So what would happen? What would happen to you? I don't know. I could end up in a nursing home or in a shelter even. Fallon's situation is hardly unique. Six in 10 people in Maine right now are or have been family caregivers. They're, they're people who every day face this responsibility of how do I pay my bills, how do I go to work, and how do I care for an aging loved one um, or a child with a disability. It doesn't look like anyone's home with that one, but... So canvassers are trying to reach them. We're just talking to people today about question one for universal in-home care. 
So that's one side of the story. The other? State economist Amanda Rector warns question one could stop Maine's economic expansion dead in its tracks. We found that the proposal had negative effects on Maine's economy across population, labor force, employment, personal income, GDP. Rector's take? The new tax will drive Mainers away. We have essentially raised the cost of doing business and living in Maine through this tax increase. And so the resulting effect is people and businesses are going to either move out or not move in. Alec Porches is Maine's finance commissioner. You're also going to see increased business production costs, so less job creation, fewer wage increases, uh, less capital investment, really all the bread and butter of economic growth is going to be negatively affected. Small wonder most business and health care groups fiercely oppose the measure. This tax is a hit on nearly every small business in this state. Newell Auger is chair of the No on Question One Stop the Scam campaign. We know of specific examples of, 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 of a similar tax fight that, was, that we had two years ago where hospitals lost the ability to bring a resident because of the specter of a 3% tax that was on the ballot and was passed two years ago. We are vehemently opposed to this. Donna DeBlois, who runs Maine Healthcare at Home, is opposed because she says patient information would be shared with third-party groups. That information would be given to a group of individuals that they don't know and they don't understand why. Supporters insist people's privacy will be protected. But what about that supposed population exodus, I asked opponent DeBlois. Would you move out of Maine? No, I wouldn't. No one's going to leave the state of Maine. It's a bad deal for the state of Maine, but I don't think they're going to leave because of it. But Shipyard Brewing Company President Bruce Forsley does. He says he would consider leaving and that other businesses would too. We're surrounded by luxury hotels and a couple of significant office complexes. And these complexes are going to be staffed with a lot of high earning executives that if they cannot fill, it may require a lot of these companies to uh, have their administrative offices off site in other states. And all of this would affect our core market. But Ben Chin of the Maine People's Alliance doesn't buy it. There's zero evidence that anybody is going to leave the state as a result of this policy passing. But what there is evidence every day is that the system right now isn't working for families. And Father Cross reminds us that Maine has other attractions as well. People come to Maine because of the quality of life that's here, because of the connection to the environment, because of the low traffic. My mom always says when I go to the brewer, how is the traffic today? And I said, Mother, there isn't any traffic in Maine. And you can't put a, a dollar figure on those things. But you can put a dollar figure on an income tax hike. So people here disagree about question one. There is consensus about one thing, though. Most of us want to find some way to age in place. Everyone wants to stay in their home if they can do that. Who wants to go in a nursing home, you know? One of my mentors, who's died in a nursing home himself, said there, wall-to-wall -wall carpeted vegetable bins. Not a good driver. How important is it to Hazel Cross to be at home with her family? Oh, how important. It's my life. For the PBS NewsHour, this is economics correspondent Paul Zalman reporting from Maine.